Hello and welcome to Clarinet Ninja. My name is Jay. Today we're going to talk about why somebody, me, you, anybody, might want to play or practice with a double lipped embouchure. Now, your first question might be, what the heck is a double lipped embouchure? And that simply means we put both of our lips over our teeth. I think all of us play with our bottom lip over our teeth so that our lip is touching the reed, not our teeth. And double lipped means that we put our top lip over our teeth. So, it's how an oboist or bassoonist would play their instrument. A couple questions might be, why doesn't everybody do this? Why do we not do this? Let's uh, dive into all those things. I'm going to make the conclusion of this video right now, which is, should you play double lipped? Maybe. Should you be able to play double lipped? Yes. And uh, that's pretty much it. You should be able to play anything that you play single lipped. You should be able to play a double lipped. If that's what you came here for, there's your answer. Uh, let's get into the why and the how, because that's the fun part. Let's start with just our mouthpiece. A lot of my videos, all of them, are based on a particular concept, which is if you play on your mouthpiece by itself, you should get, essentially, a high C. What would be a high D on the clarinet? Something in that area. Now, let's see if I put both my lips over my teeth, if I get that same note. Yep, that's good news. You should get that same note too. And that is a way for us to tell if our voicing is holding up in both of those situations. But there are some things that are going on here that can give us a lot of information. And that goes into the actual reason why you should be able to play double lipped. One of the things that we talk about a lot in the clarinet world is this idea of don't bite down. I think we would all agree, you shouldn't bite down. But what does that mean? How do you know if you're biting down? Well, I got news for you. If you put your top lip over your teeth and play and it hurts, you are biting down. And uh, that'll tell you. Uh, that'll give you a very, very tactile uh, sensation uh, that will give you the information that you are biting down. And what that will mean is that you can practice double lipped in a way to find how your voicing needs to change, how your air support might need to change a little bit to make it possible to get this high C D on the clarinet, double lipped. Double lipped, single lipped. So I can tell when I play that the pressure that my teeth are putting on the top of the mouthpiece is the same as what I feel in my lip when I play double lipped. Again, double lipped, single lipped. That ended a little screwy, sorry about that. So, this is a way that we can get some information. Jay's not biting down. Good news. Now, what are some other things? Why did anybody ever play double lipped? What, are the, what, what comes good from it? Why don't we all do it? Why don't we just play this way? Here, you know, I don't have, there, there's probably no official answer to this. I can tell you what I think. That's what I'm here to do. One of the things that happens when you play double lipped is it feels, it can feel, let me say it that way, you can feel a little bit unstable because uh, the mouthpiece can be swimming around in your mouth a little bit more because you're not holding onto it as tight because it would hurt. There's double lipped, single lipped. Here's one of the things I can tell when I, when I practice double lipped. And let me just tell you, I practice double lipped depending on what I'm working on in my clarinet playing. Every time I practice, sometimes, sometimes not for weeks at a time. Uh, during this pandemic, uh, when there was nobody playing music anywhere live, I actually played for like two months straight double lipped just to see what would happen when I went back to playing single lipped. It's an interesting experiment. Uh, and actually, let me be completely transparent. 
for some reason, when I was a kid, that's the first thing I did was play double limped. I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. I just did. Maybe my teacher told me to. It was fourth grade. That was a long time ago. I don't remember. But I did play double lipped when I first started playing for a very, very long time. Uh, and I can't draw a straight line to how that impacted my playing later on, but I'm sure it did. One of the things when you are playing double lipped is it puts a lot more pressure on the thumb holding the clarinet. In a perfect world, it shouldn't put more pressure on that thumb because you really shouldn't be biting down harder when you're playing single lipped, right? But we are able to hold the clarinet a little bit more with our mouth when we do it that way. And the clarinet is more stable on our mouth when we do it that way. And th there's some advantages, a lot of advantages to that. The advantage to playing double lipped is that our p the, the clarinet, for some reason, actually plays a little bit better in tune, at least for me, when I play double lipped. Because everything is set up kind of exactly right. My voicing is doing the work that it's supposed to be doing. There are ways in which I compensate when I play single lipped that are, I'm unconscious of, and I think we all are that when you play double lip, there's a bit of like a truth serum that goes into it to see what's really happening. And it can give us a lot of information for us to uncover some of the things that we're doing uh, that are compensating in ways that we probably shouldn't be doing. I want to go over some of the content of my other videos. I'll link them all down in the description so you can see these exercises uh, the way I describe them, not talking about the double lip component. The first one we should talk about uh, is in my How to Glissando video. Good video, you should check it out. Uh, but, and it has to do with mouthpiece flexibility. And it, it has this idea to it. Like you're playing a high C on your mouthpiece, but in order to glissando, you need to have some flexibility in there. And also, this flexibility will help you in your regular clarinet playing life, no matter what you're playing. Uh, I wouldn't suggest this for, for beginners, but for intermediate to advanced to professional players, this is a very, very good idea. If you don't do it, give it a try. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start on a C. We're going to bend down, back up, bend down a little further, back up, bend down a little further than that, and back up. And ultimately, you should, and hopefully I can, do an entire octave. So I'm going to try and do it by half steps. I'm going to use my ears. I'm, this may not be perfectly in tune, but this is just to illustrate the concept. Pretty gross octave, but it's there. Now, let's give it a try double it. This should work. Let's see if it does. Thank goodness it works. Okay, so that that is one way to see if we're doing our mouthpiece flexibility and we're not biting our way up to the top note each time. Because if we are, we'll know it when we practice it that way. Some other things that I suggest people practice, and I'll link these videos again. Uh, these are some tone building exercises. I've got this idea that the clarinet is called the clarinet because of the clarion register. Uh, there was an instrument called the Shalomo. The Shalomo register is the low register. The Clarion register is when we use the register key. And then the Altissimo register is when we pick up our first finger to play the very high notes. Now, the clarinet, my theory is that we should be voiced using the setting that's going to give us the Clarion register, even if we don't use the register key. Kind of, right? Obviously, we're not going to make changes to go down on the shallow mode register, but we should be able to play the clarion register without the aid of the register key. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brief bit of that exercise. And so, that exercise would be to play a C, register key up to G, and then let the register key go, and it should remain on a G. Let's see if that works. First, single lipped the way I traditionally play. Mm -hmm. And I'll just go down one finger at a time, just to, to show you how it goes down to low E. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to start on G, go back, go up. I would normally do this chromatically, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to. So this should all work double lipped. Let's see if it does. Double lipped. You get the idea? I actually, doing this every time I do it, every time I'm not kidding, it gets refined a little bit more. Okay, so now I've got another video out there about overtones, which is all about voicing. And that would mean like we're going to do kind of the same thing where we're going to play C, G, high E, all on the low C fingering, no register key at all. Not going to press it, I promise. Here's how it sounds, single lipped. So, we have those three notes all in one fingering. Let's see about doing that double lipped. That should work on every note. Let's try a low G. So that's G, D, and, and B, yeah. Let's try a high note. Let's try it on open G. So that should give us G, high D, and then a very high note. <laughs> Sometimes forget what it is. Okay, here's it is single lipped. Here's it is single lipped. Let's try double lift. I haven't tried this in years. Took me a second to find it. There's something for me to practice. Okay. So, but again, this really tells us, are we cheating to get these overtones? Watch the whole overtone video. I'll link it down in the description below. Uh, it's really, really helpful. That's the whole explanation of the how, the why, and some very specific exercises on how to practice. It's going to really, really help. Also, doing a double lift is going to really, really help too. I'm going to go practice that after I get done with this video. All right. So, those ideas are going to really, really, really help. Let's see if I can do my improve your voicing playing one note. I'll link this video in the description. All right. So, that, remember, it's like this. We block the bell of our clarinet with our leg and we play a long B. All of our fingers down, third space B with the register key on. Sounds like this. And then my suggestion would be to play uh, a bugle call. My theory is this should all work double lift as well. And I'm sure you've noticed I'm blowing ha 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 or he 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 actually for each one of those notes. So again, this will tell you if you're clamping down, if you are biting down, 
you're going to hurt. This is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. That's because if you're not used to it, but this is going to really tell you so that that way when you put your clarinet back in your mouth, this is going to really influence your ability to be focused and ringing in your sound playing single lipped. A lot of information about how our single lipped embouchure should feel. So these are some really cool and fun ideas to get a lot of information to help you with your single lip embouchure. Because this is all stuff, our voicing, our how it feels to play the clarinet, how much pressure you should put down. I can't tell you in words, I can only give you exercises to help you find the information that you need. This is how I found the information that I felt I needed all the way through. Uh, and this didn't come from one person. This came from lots of different people uh, that were really, really helpful in my development as a clarinet player. And it's still, it's still the same stuff that I do now to refine these ideas as I make changes, as I do things. Uh, I, I make a change in my mouthpiece or my embouchure or my reed or my ligature or uh, whatever it is. You know, you gradually filter them through this process to find out like what's working, what's not working, what do I need to change in order to make this happen? Am I, am I cheating somehow? Uh, this will give you a lot of information about that. It's really, really helpful. And it could be that you want to end up playing double lipped all the time. Cool. You should do that. There's no reason not to do that except if you're uh, a woodwind doubler and you got to play some flute because let me tell you this. I don't believe this is a hot take. I believe anybody would agree with this. If you're going to play the flute, the last thing you can do, the last thing you should do is smash the other half of your embouchure against the mouthpiece. <laughs> your lips are going to swell up, not a lot, but a little bit, and it's going to really, really make it impossible to play the flute. So this would, for a woodwind doubler, be just a practice technique. And actually, you know, I, I have a life as a woodwind doubler, uh, but most of my life is as a clarinet player. And, uh, I, I don't play double lipped anymore, but I practice that way for all of these reasons. So, if you're still here, like and subscribe, would you? Thanks for being here. And I hope that this little, uh, this little video with some ideas about playing double lipped is going to uh, be a benefit to you. And please go check out these other videos and do these exercises, single lipped and double lipped when you feel like you're ready to, to take that leap into getting this information for yourself. Uh, I also think, I'm not going to go through it today, but I do think that this idea is going to help with articulation. Doing all, do my articulation video double lipped. Be really good. Uh, really good ideas. So, check it out. Thanks for being here. And uh, let me know if you play double lipped down in the comments. Do you play double lipped? What's your experience? I'm sure that there's more ideas, there's more benefits, there's more negatives than I'm talking about here. This is just my experience. But I wanted to share it with you and I want you to share yours with me if you would. Uh, and if you haven't tried these exercises before, give them a try. See what you think. All right. We'll see you next time.